sisters, this blackmail reckoning that Cynthia G has been telling you young sisters about for a few years, it has arrived. I went to the black Walmart today. I'm walking around in Walmart and I'm looking at, from a distance, these trash bag bandits, these legacies of low achievement, these leaders of femicide, genocide, homicide, filicide, matricide, grass, every neg negative side there is, this is what these black men are a part of. So I'm walking down there and I realize I feel nervous because I'm thinking, okay, I got on shorts and even though I got one foot in the grave and the other on a banana peel, according because I didn't hit that wall. Oh, I hit that wall years ago, right? According to uh, Kevin's sexuals. Well, anyway, um, I'm feeling nervous because I'm like, I know that they're unaliving four to five of us a day. And I'm thinking, God, please don't let some black man come up and say hi to me. And I don't speak to him the way he wants me to speak to him. And he goes into the kitchen se section and pulls up a butcher knife, right? I'm literally afraid of them. I'm literally afraid with good reason. So I just started walking through like none of them were alive. I just started walking through like it was COVID, right? I don't want to get near none of them. I don't want to touch none of them. I don't want none of them to talk to me. Don't say nothing to me. If I saw one on an aisle, I went to the other aisle. Sisters, these men were bending over backwards, turning flips, you know, marching with batons, trying to get black women's attentions because all of us i realized we were all only making eye contact with each other the sisters complimenting each other oh your hair is so cute oh look at your baby we're talking to each other and we see one of them we just were like they was bent over one duty almost hit his ear on the floor trying to make eye contact with me how you doing sister oh now that black male awakening is happening now all of a sudden oh we want to be nice and we want to speak to sisters and sisters just walk past us and don't say anything well you know we're damned if we do damned if we don't when we was speaking to you guys y'all all like oh she won't me and then when we now treating you like the leaders of genocide homicide filicide femicide and all of the other sides now, all of a sudden, now, now you want to get your act together and speak. But before you speak to me, go to counseling and also get your prostate checked. And if you're looking for a hospice care wife, you're going to die alone. All right. This is going to be a response. And you saw the video in the beginning. This used up old catcher's mitt <laughs> running her mouth with nothing to say. All praise to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone and Shalom to the hopefully elect out there and to the real sisters, okay? The remnant, the sisters that, that represent the remnant that are part of the uh, uh, the elect of the house of Israel because these so-called Negroes and nigger women, they threw. And she recognizes this, but she's through too. So anyway, the video is going to be entitled Response, Black Male Reckoning is Here. You saw the video of this woman in the beginning. She's talking about the black male reckoning is here. And she talking about somebody named Cynthia G. You know, and she even had a, a, a distasteful joke aimed towards Kevin Samuels, who passed away. You can see she was happy about that. But this, listening to this woman talk shows you one thing, that even she recognizes the condition of our men and our nation. And I ain't going to take up for them. The so-called black man, Latino man, Native American man, particularly, we're dealing with the so-called black man, right? For the most part, they threw. Okay? They in bad shape, man. They, I, but that's our whole nation is in bad shape. It ain't just the men. It's the women, too. My question to her is, have you looked at what the Bible says about the women? You talking about the men, but have you looked at what the Bible says about the women? About the women of our nation? About the so-called black woman who, who would be from the tribe of Judah, Levi, or Benjamin, today from the 12 tribe of Israel? Have you looked at, at your con your own condition? Because you're talking about the men and what terrible shape they're in and how you fear for yourself. No, the word is out. The black woman is the one that's toxic. A toxic Jezebel running her mouth, wore out like an old catcher's mitt. Now she thinks she on some type of level. And the only reason you're doing that is because your lover, the so-called white man, the damn serpent, the es Esau Edom from the Holy Bible, you know, has uh, set you up in some type of way. But before we get too far in, let's let's go real quick and look at this word reckoning. Right? Here it is right here. Reckoning. 
It says the action or process of calculating or estimating something. And that time hasn't come yet. The day of reckoning is not here yet, which is the day of judgment. And it ain't going to just be for the so-called black man. It's coming for you too, black woman. A person's view, opinion, or judgment. More like this one. A bill or account or its settlement. See, the day the Lord's going to come, he's going to reckon with the house of Israel all together as a nation. You know what? Let me take that back. He's going to reckon it is going to be upon our whole nation, but you're going to have many of those of our nation that are going to be exempted from the judgment. Others will be judged on, on an individual basis. It says, what does the definition of reckoning mean? A reckoning is a calculation or number you estimate. And the Lord has it estimated that he's going to destroy. He's going to deliver an innumerable multitude, but he's going to deliver one third of all Israelites out of Babylon the Great. And he's going to destroy two thirds. It says right here, what does days of reckoning mean? A time when the consequences of a course or mistakes. It's like it. A time when the consequence of a course of mistakes or misdeeds are felt. And that time is going to come when the Lord does it. Now you can see it a little bit now on the horizon. And, and I, I don't have a problem with her saying the condition of these niggas because we told you. But it ain't just the men. Have you looked at the women? Just in, in regular everyday life. Fat, out of shape, fake butts, fake eyelashes. You're terrible. Lead, and you know, you're terrible. Uh, uh, set terrible examples. Your older women set terrible examples for the younger women. And you have to take into account you're somewhat accountable for the condition of these black men nowadays. Because many of them grew up in single parent homes and you cut the father out. So really, you're looking at what you're looking at your own. You and the so-called white man's creation with these dumbed down niggas in the world. That's why they're bending over backwards trying to get your attention in the stores because they don't know no better. They trying they, what they're doing is they're trying to date their mothers. That's what they're doing. They don't know any better. They chasing that. If a man is chasing after that, you got a you got a man. You got a bad bro. That ain't nothing to chase. An old sway back, worn out mule. Anyway. The scriptures don't talk about just the men. It tells the condition of our whole nation as a people because we are under the curses. This is Lamentations 4 verse 1. It says, how is the gold become dim? How is the most fine gold changed? The stones of the sanctuary are poured out in the top of every street. The precious sons, didn't say daughters, the precious sons of Zion, comparable to fine gold. So first and foremost, she needs to understand that the man is the prize. Not definitely not you women. Definitely not the so-called black woman. You ain't the prize. You think because you got some jobs, but you had to fucking suck your way to the top. You had to bend over and give up your ass to the so-called white man. You had to go into the desks, right? And do all kind of freaky nasty shit in order to be recognized by him. But you think because you got some corporate positions that that makes you leapfrog us in authority or importance? Get over yourself. And, and many brothers call these these bitches Eve, I don't call them Eve. I call them goddamn Jezebel. I call them Jezebel, which Eve would be accurate, I suppose. A rebellious woman, the mother of civilization, but I, I don't call them that. I just say a damn nigga woman. The precious sons of Zion comparable to fine gold. See, the men were considered precious in the sight of the Lord, like fine gold. But he goes on, how are they, con is, how are they esteemed as earthen pitchers, the work of the hands of the potter, right? We've been brought down to a lower state as the men of the precious sons of Zion or as the uh, men of the, of the nation of Israel. We were brought down to a very low state, but not just the men. It goes on to the women. Even the sea monsters dry out the breast. They give suck to their young ones. The daughter of my people has become cruel like the ostriches in the wilderness. See that? And really, it's, it's really speaking to the whole nation. The whole nation has become, you know. Let's see here, gave a style. Just hold on here. Thou wings. Look at that. Let's see if I can pull this up. Yeah, this is Job 39 and verse 13. It says, Gavest thou the goodly wings unto the peacocks, or wings, wings and feathers unto the ostrich, which leaveth her eggs in the earth and warmeth them in the dust. 
and forget it that the foot may crush them or that the wild beast may break them. She is hardened against her young ones as though they were not hers. Her labor is in vain without fear because the Most High had deprived her of wisdom. Neither hath he imparted to her understanding. You see that? And it's talking about the women of our nation. It ain't talking about an ostrich or a peacock because the Most High didn't give beasts wisdom. Because the Most High had deprived her of wisdom, neither hath he imparted to her understanding. What time she lifteth up herself on high, she scorneth the horse and his rider. You got that now. These women are lifted up with pride, thinking that they're, you know, that they're the heads of the nation. You ain't the head of the nation. And she even admitted that she hit the wall. I bet if you see that body, it's all worn out, all out of shape. You think she got a nice body? Probably not. She ain't even got a nice face. And I'm not an advocate for a bunch of makeup, but in this case, greatly needed. Anyway, when you go into the scriptures, and this should show you brothers out there too. Before we go there, I want to read you this. Because see, the Most High said that our nation was basically in a condition to be destroyed, man. And you see it all over. Yeah, yeah the men are in bad shape. The so-called, your average so-called black man. I say your inner city black man. He threw his hell, man. Them little hood boogers that you, you, you damn hoes raised. You drove the man out of the house. You had a bunch of abortions after you got to the limit of babies that your your polluted womb could bear or that you wanted to take care of. You've been having children out of wedlock for your earned income tax credit. You think we didn't know about that? To get food stamps, to get an apartment, to get a WIC check, to get a fucking welfare check. Now that game wore out. Now you're on to something different. And that whole child support racket, uh, child support racket. you are going to be accountable for all this stuff. Why you so busy talking about the black male reckoning? What about all them goddamn abortions you done had? The world heavyweight champion in abortions. Now you done moved on to plastic cosmetic and plastic surgeries. Getting all that, all that shit put in your, uh, in your booties. So you can do what? So you can trap more unsuspecting victims to take care of your, your whack ass. Anyway, Isaiah 1 verse 9 says, Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. We would have been completely cut off, but the Most High left us a remnant. If the Most High had not left us a remnant, you would be stuck with this toxic Jezebel. For the women, you would be stuck with toxic Pookie. You see? And it's getting worse all the time. But the Lord did leave us a remnant. That's why we tell you, you, you uh, brothers and sisters out there, unless these niggas is trying to be in this truth, fuck them. This is Micah chapter 7 and the scriptures warn you about trusting these, you brothers out there, trusting these damn nigga women. Micah 7 and 5. Trust ye not in a friend, put ye not confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. Here you are, you in the truth, you telling this hoe everything. She ain't in the truth, you telling her everything about the truth. Remember the video going back a while ago, you had Jake trying to convert his woman, Right? And she's sitting there with a caption in the video saying, this nigga trying to convert me to some new religion and I'm just trying to smash. Her mind doesn't operate like yours. She ain't thinking about the truth. She just think about worldly shit, eyelashes, you know, uh, 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 purses and whatnot, perfumes and, and, and uh, high heel shoes. This is what her mind is thinking of. You're the one thinking about righteousness. You thinking about the kingdom of heaven. She ain't thinking about that, man. She think about hood booger shit, hood nigga shit. Right? She think about Dolce and Gabbana. <laughs> she think about Dooney and Burke. A, 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 pick, a, a pancake and a smoke. You know? A blunt and a beer. This is what this whole thing about. You up there trying to convert these. Man, don't, don't waste your time. Now, don't get me wrong. You got exceptions to the rule. You got women, right? That are of the special breed, which is which is who? The remnant or the elect. Today, right now, they're the hopefully elect and it's going to transform or transfer over to the elect. But other than that, all bets are off. Trust ye not in a friend, put ye not confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lies in thy bosom. You don't need to tell Shaquita, you know, try to show her the breakdown of Revelation uh, chapter 12. She ain't gonna get it. For the son dishonoreth the father, the daughter riseth up against her mother, the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own house even in your own family. Therefore, I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My power will hear me. 
Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him. And part of that indignation is this right here. You see this? She's definitely scorned against you. She's sitting here making it as if she's a prize. You're trash. In some type of way, she's going to bring, you know, like you can't live without her. Fuck her. She can't bring back our nation with just her whack-ass womb. We can bring back the nation with other women. Women of the other nations because we got the royal seed in us. We are the treasure. We are the prize. Fuck you worrying about a sway back mule for. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him. Until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness. And that's for the men. Then she that is my enemy shall see it. This right here is your enemy. This is your enemy. I wonder what kind of man she got. If she married to a white dude. You think he's a prize? A recessive gene, <laughs> a recessive gene primate whose main function is to destroy the earth, who even the very sun is the enemy of. You think he's going, he's your way to salvation? He is not. <laughs> y'all, y'all threw together. You and that goddamn serpent. Then she that is my enemy shall see it, and shame shall cover her, which said unto me, Where is the Lord our power? She don't believe in the Lord. She believes in money and credit cards, you know, debt bearing notes that are not backed by anything. She believes in, in shit that doesn't profit anybody anything like, uh, you know, how many times she made a nigga bust, whether she the throat goat or not. She care about that. How many times she could twerk and make her butt cheeks clap together. This is what they care about. Where is the Lord thy power? Mine enemies shall, Salakia, mine eyes shall behold her. Now shall she be trodden down as the mire of the streets this is your future nigga woman why you talking your shit and in the coming days even in the hood you women gonna you gonna need them hood niggas that you hate you're gonna need these toxic so-called toxic black males these pookas and ray rays and you damn sure gonna need the men of the lord but we ain't gonna be there for you we're not gonna be there for you and then she had the nerve to talk about get your prostate checked shit you got an idea how many you hold down for breast cancer and ovarian cancer and lupus and all types of other shit you better check the stats why you so busy worrying about us you need to be concerned about yourself then she that is my enemy shall see it and shame shall cover her which said unto me where is the lord our power mine eyes shall behold her we're gonna see you in a low state now shall she be tried down as the mire of the streets that's right you bragging now, you up today, but tomorrow you're going to be on the bottom. You're going to be on the bottom and you're going to want some help. These very same men that you that you you look down on going to be your lords one day. You only are you ever going to be the best you're going to ever be is number 2. You'll never be number 1. So keep on bragging about your black male awakening. Have you read what the scriptures say about the black woman? Let's read more. Isaiah 316, it says right here, Judah's women denounced. Denounced by who? By the Almighty. You've been in uh you've been in hot water with the Lord since the garden, bitch. Isaiah 316, moreover, the Lord had the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and missing as they go and making a tinkling with their feet. What is the backup verse? Uh what does the uh, alternate version say? NIV. The Lord says the women of Zion are hardy, walking along with outstretched necks, flirting with their eyes, strutting along with swaying hips, with ornaments jinging on their ankles. That's them. That's them. I want to get it. I want to get this. Uh, ooh. NASB 95. Moreover, the Lord said, because the daughters of Zion are proud and walk with heads held high and seductive eyes and go along with mincy steps and tinkle the bangles on their feet. Right, they do that. These hoes is proud, man. Proud. Proud as shit. You can't tell them no different. Right? Stank booty. Stank crotch. I want to say a lot more, but I'm going I'm to I'm keep it. I'm going to keep it cool. Let's go to the good news translation. 
Isaiah, right? Just hold tight. I want to see what this says. Is, is it Isaiah 32? Oh, gone. Where I'm at? There, there it is. Nope. Isaiah 32. It was Isaiah 3. Yeah, Isaiah 316. My mistake. Let's get rid of that. Isaiah 3 verse 16, it says, The Lord said, look at this, a warning to the women of Jerusalem. Now, I'll say this. If you was to tell this woman she's an Israelite, she ain't going to listen anyway. She's not going to listen anyway. She's a demon. And she has... A lot of these women, when we do these videos and we, and we show these different women, a lot of them are really pretty. Not this one. <laughs> that one is through. She has no features. A warning to the women of Jerusalem. The Lord said, look how proud the women of Jerusalem are. They are, they walk along with their noses in the air. They are always flirting. They take dainty little steps and the bracelets on their ankles jingle. But I will punish them. I will shave their heads and leave them bald. And the Most High didn't shave your head and left you bald. He put that curse on you. Isaiah 317. Therefore the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the, the head of the daughters of Zion. And the Lord will discover their secret parts. That's why they got that, that stench. And that day the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their calls and their round tires like the moon. And he goes into all the different, you know, apparel and stuff that they wear. Let's jump down and hit verse 24. It says, And it shall come to pass that instead of a sweet smell, there should be stink. And instead of a girdle, a rent, right? Instead of a nice figure, she's going to have a, she's going to be over, overweight, fat, black, nasty, stink. You know, talking about she thick. No, you fat. You're not thick. You're fat. If you wear the average, and, and me and brother you want to talk about from time to time, the average so-called black woman weighs 200 plus pounds. You outweigh the men. That ain't nothing to be proud of. You weigh 200, a woman that weighs over 200 pounds. Don't get me wrong. You got a certain situation where it's, you know, the woman is attractive because she's nicely distributed. But on average, the so-called black woman is well over 200 pounds. What the hell are you bragging about? And it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, there should be stink. And instead of a girdle, a rent. And instead of well-set hair, baldness. And instead of a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth. And burning instead of beauty, right? Burning instead of beauty, meaning you ugly as hell. You through. You see? So you don't have no reason to, 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 uh, to brag. I know you're feeling yourself because you're getting wick and you got the earned income credit and you got HUD housing and you got a lot of kickbacks and you can sell your ass and play one guy against another, get him to pay for this and pay for that. But see, you have to think those men that are paying you for your goodies, they're on the plus side too because they don't really want to be bothered with you. They just want some of your, some of your goodies. <laughs> After that, you served your purpose. We can cook better than you for the most part. And we ain't talking about in the in the situation with with the women and the truth. We talking about these 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 dogs. And, and let me rephrase that because just because a woman know you an Israelite don't mean you in the truth. Because a lot of you are still fucking feminists. We ain't talking about you that can't close your damn mouths. We ain't even we ain't even dealing with you. We talking about women that are doing what the Lord told them to do. The real sisters. Verse seventeen. This is Isaiah three and eighteen again. From the Good News Translation, it says, A day is coming when the Lord will take away from the women of Jerusalem everything they are so proud of. The ornaments they wear on their ankles, on their heads and their necks, and on their wrists. He will take away their veils. You see that? Let's just jump down. Verse 24 says, Instead of using perfumes, they will stink. Instead of fine belts, they will wear coarse ropes. Instead of having beautiful hair, they will be bald. And made movies about how many damn weaves you people get. I forgot what it was called. You know, good hair or some shit, whatever it is. It's movies about it. It's doc well documented how much money you spend on hair every, all year long. Right? Around the world. You different so-called black women going to get them weaves and them, well, I don't even know what this shit is called. Them different braids and weaves and uh, uh, lace front wigs. Why you got to do that? 
because your ass is bald and the Lord said it. But you ready, you ready to talk about us. You in bad shape. Instead of using perfumes, they will, they will stink. Instead of fine belts, they will wear coarse ropes. Instead of having beautiful hair, they will be bald. Instead of fine clothes, they will be dressed in rags. Their beauty will be turned to shame. See that? And the Most High, he did that to us at a time. That's why you're in this low condition. But when, the, when this uh, coming judgment, when Jacob's trouble plays out, you're going to go through a whole lot worse. And these very men you look down on and despise, you're going to be you're going to be looking to them for help. Now, the scriptures tell us here in Isaiah 32 and 1 that we hope as a nation, we have a glorious future. It says, behold, a king shall reign in righteousness and princes shall rule in judgment. Who are these princesses? They're the men. The word Yasharala, which is the name in the Paleo Hebrew or the word uh, for Israel, Yasharala, Yah, he, Shar, prince. Allah meaning God. He is a prince with God. Right? We're the sons of the living God. Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness. That king is Yahweh Shah. And princes shall rule in judgment. A man and a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind and a covert from the tempest. Right? A, a hiding place for the women. As rivers of water in a dry place, as a shadow of a great rock in a weary land. You see that? So, in the future, we're going to be back in our rightful place. But before that, in verse 9, it says, Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. So the Lord said, Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Many days and years shall ye be troubled, ye careless women. For the vengeance shall fail, the gathering shall not come. Tremble, ye women that are at ease. Be troubled. Ye careless ones, strip you and make you bare and gird sackcloth upon your loins. You're going to be in heavy mourning. You know, you're going to be in some tough, tumultuous times. It says they shall lament for the teats, for the pleasant fields, for the fruitful vine. Yeah, you're going to you're going to wish you had the times that you got now, you know, when you can uh, uh, you can run game on men and get your rent paid, get your bills paid, get your hair and your nails done. You're going to wish it was, it was that time, right? You're going to you're gonna uh, lament for these times that you got now. You can get all kind of kickbacks from the government because the time is coming that this devil is going to, he's going to allow you to see his real horns. He is going to come forth. He's going to show you what the devil really is, who the devil really is. Now, when we get into the kingdom, we're going to be straight. But before that, you're going to get completely tried down as a mire of the streets. You and all them damn children you've been having as meal tickets. Remember, you was having all them different kids by different men. So you could get, you know, file them on your taxes, get tax money, earned income credit. You know, you had all types of uh, benefits for having them kids and stuff. And you completely wrote the man out of it. You're right. You turned your back on the man. You told the kids they, that the man left. No, it was you. You were stopping it. But guess what? Those very same kids you used as a meal ticket, they're going to be a curse under you in that day. They're going to be a curse to you in that day. And I had it happen to me too. So I know. Now, the Lord says, in the end, he's going to clean these women up. Just like, but this is for the elect though. This is uh, Isaiah 4 and 1. But the men going to be back rightfully in, in, uh, in rulership over his house. It says, in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man saying, we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name. To take away our reproach. This is leading up to the kingdom in this first verse. In Jacob's trouble, women gonna be, you know, not caring if a man has more than one woman. You're gonna be saying you just need a man, you know, you need a strong man. It goes on in verse two, it says, In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious. This is in the kingdom. And the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped of Israel. And it shall come to pass that he that is left that that he that is left in Zion and he that remains in Jerusalem shall be called holy. Even everyone that is written among the living in Jerusalem. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and shall be purged and shall and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment. And by the spirit of burning. And that's got to come. That hasn't happened yet. The Lord has not yet 
purged away the filth of the daughters of Zion. He hadn't purged it away, but it's coming. He's going to purge away the filth of these women. So eventually we're no longer going to be bickering. They're no longer going to be looking down on us, but that hasn't came yet. You see? So, I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, I want to just read real quick here. These foolish women, when they run their damn mouths, I meant to read this from the opening, but we'll read it now. This is Proverbs. We'll start at 9 and 12. It says, If thou be wise, thou shalt be wise for thyself. But if thou scornest, thou alone shalt bear it. A foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing. Right? And this is what you see, a foolish woman. She's doing all this talking like the Lord is only going, he's going to skip over the women. He ain't going to do nothing to them. He's just going he to wreck him with the men. Nah, you women got a lot of shit to pay for, man. You've been doing a lot of a lot of wickedness, a whole bunch. And it's more you than there are us. So most of the two-thirds are going to be made up of women. Most of the one-third is going to be made up of women. But you're going to be, you know, the men are going to be few, fewer in number than the women because we're going to have many wives. So better get used to sharing. Anyway, this has been response to blackmail reckoning. And you know, that's it. All praise to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Shalom.